So this week we're exploring the heart of the Florida Keys, and that's Marathon. You get to touch and feel some of the sea creatures. RV under the sea. <laughs> the history of our ocean is in right your hands. Uh, and hopefully the future, right? Are you ready for some island flavors? This is my kind of dish. I know it is. Touchdown! Seriously, I love how you continue to impress me. We're in the Keys! when you hit this bridge. Vacation is on. I've been coming down here with my family since I think I was 10 years old. I went to John Penny Camp. And you fall in love instantly when you see this water. It's absolutely beautiful. It's intoxicating, the different colors and patterns that you're seeing in the water. When we started the fishing show 24 years ago, this was the place we came for the first three episodes. Makes sense. And you know, I'm not sit on the beach with a cocktail in my hand all day kind of girl. There's a time for that. But I need adventure, I need history, and I need food. I think we got you covered with all three of those, but even better, I'm gonna introduce you to some of the critters that live in this salt water, but you're not gonna have to swim in it. I trust you. We'll see. <laughs> we're in the lower keys. We're gonna be exploring Key West, and we're gonna be exploring the heart of the Florida Keys, and that is Marathon. So it's simple to get down here. All you do is head south out of Florida City onto the overseas highway, US-1. You go through Key Largo, you go through Isle Mirada, you go through Tavernier, and right into Marathon, cross the Seven Mile Bridge right here in the Sunshine Key RV Resort. A lot of people always ask why I drive, and truth be told, I get motion sickness sitting in the passenger seat, and I'm severely directionally challenged. So Kevin is a phenomenal navigator, and I like to drive. It's important when you got your driver backing into your spot to get out and help them. Rather than sit in the passenger seat and sit there and not help out, it's best to get, whether there's branches, whether there's wires, even the power box, or maybe your picnic table. You've got to definitely help the driver get into your spot. The second part of all of this is I trust him a thousand percent when he parks me. I only have to look at one thing, and that's my driver's side mirror. And there he is. We unhooked at the beginning of the park. He drove here, scoped out how I'm going to be parking, and here we go. Come on back. All right, this is what we do to straight. All right, when we're ready for her to turn, all right, we say turn. He tells me when to turn, when to straighten it out. I occasionally will watch my front, but he's already scoped out everything, and he tells me where to go. All right, when you're ready for her to go straight, this is the straight sign, straight back. I trust him completely, too, when he's telling me what to do. All right, then he gives me the final signal to stop, brakes, jacks down, it's home. Once we got there, we put the jacks down, we put the slides out, took a short walk to the Sunset Pier to watch Mother Nature do her thing. Oh, oh. look at this. If more people would just get outside and see this. Well, I owe it to my dad. I feel like it's a fitting end of the day to watch the sun go down. It's our first day. We just got here, mm -hmm. and this is spectacular. Just as sure as there are sunsets, there'll be sunrises after it, and know that I'll go there with you. It's been a spectacular show of colors since we went over the bridge, and, and now we're here for sunset. It's a time to be grateful and thankful for the day we got and celebrate with Mother Nature's colors. And we get to just walk right back to our RV. I didn't bring my fishing pole. Seriously, I love how you continue to impress me and bring me to see things like this. Wait till tomorrow. <laughs>
I hope you're impressed and not freaked <laughs> out. <laughs> Got a great night's sleep last night. Woke up, jumped in the toad, headed back across the seven mile bridge into Marathon for something I was looking forward to the whole time, and that was the aquarium encounter. This place looks cool. You get to touch and feel some of the sea creatures. I'm up for anything. Aquarium encounter, look at that. The angler fish. I love that. It's a cool. Look at all the things to do here. Good. Hi, I'm Key. Hi, Key. Patrice. Patrice, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Nice to meet you as well. Wow, so much to do. Where do we start? Well, welcome to Aquarium Encounters. I would definitely suggest heading over the lagoon first. You'll see all the beautiful mangroves surrounding it. Fantastic. All Thank right. you so much. Absolutely. Thanks Enjoy. for having us. Our facility is set up with a man-made lagoon. It shapes around our facility like a big horseshoe. We have multiple species in there as well, from your nice big tarpon, your jacks and snappers, your really excitable fish, and of course the beautiful parrot fish that everyone loves seeing around our reef ecosystems. These are blue and rainbow parrot fish. Look at them, the rainbow. <gasps> oh, look, look at his mouth. Look at their eyelids. He's blowing a kiss at you. We're a fully interactive aquarium. We offer guided tours and feeds all day, but the best part about it, I think, is how interactive you can get with our animals. What do we got in this tank? Look at that starfish. Oh, starfish and horseshoe crabs. Check out this guy. We can touch this tank. Yeah, it's really yeah. neat. Look at this guy moving. It's a little hermit crab. Oh, nice. Oh, he went in. He Where didn't is? like that. Well, let's look at the big guy here. See what he thinks. Look at this guy. This is just such an interesting creature. Look at that. Whoa. It looks somewhat alien to me. I don't know. It's almost like he's got his home with him. It's like an RV. Oh, <laughs> it is. RV nice. under the sea. Nice. They have so many different animals there, from alligators, turtles, all kinds of different fish. But I couldn't wait to show Patrice the big shark tank. We do a training session with our nurse sharks. That allows our guests to get up close and personal. So I've called Gilly up to his station. He's trained to recognize this red triangle as his symbol that it's time to eat. Oh, he knows. So uh, look, you can see him, look at him right there. We're gonna reward him for that behavior. The best way to do this is to stand right in front of that rectangle. Okay. And then you're just gonna go straight down the clear onto that red sign. <gasps> Uh, nurse sharks eat using suction. They have teeth, but the suction pulls the food into their mouth, and so that's the noise that you're hearing. Oh my God, I think I, I jumped. Being up close like that and touching it was incredible. Oh, these guys are gorgeous. I love the little barbels. They look like fangs. Yeah. Oh. So it's nice to touch them, but uh, yeah. you want to go swimming with them? What? Come on, let's go. What? Come on, let's go. Let's do it. One of our most immersive encounters is our coral reef encounter. With that one, you get to get in the water with one of our dive instructors. And you're in our 200,000 gallon saltwater system. When you're in the coral reef, you're actually with over 50 different species of native fish. It's a perfect representation of our Florida barrier reef. So it's about a 20 pound permit in here and he keeps swimming between us and he will literally suck on this bottle like a baby. I can't believe that he makes me do things, and I wind up loving it. This is a lot of fun, <laughs> and that's why I love him. <laughs> and that tank is actually separated with two specialized windows. These windows are modified with holes, so you can actually slide the food from our reef side of the tank to the predator reef. That's how you can feed our much larger species of shark, like the sandbar sharks. She had no idea. The predators are on that tank, there's reef fish around that tank. Watch this. It's such a great time at the aquarium encounter. I really wasn't expecting to have that much fun. If you would have asked me if I wanted to do that, I would have said, no way. I will do it again. I didn't want to get out. Families do this together because it's a once in a lifetime experience. Absolutely. I'm on the right side of the tank. <laughs> We woke up on day three, 
headed across the Seven Mile Bridge into Marathon to check out the conservation efforts going on in the Florida Keys. As soon as we get off the bridge on our left hand side, you see this big teal compound and some ambulances out front and it's the Turtle Hospital. Couldn't wait to get inside and when we did, we get to meet the director of the hospital, Betty Zirkelbach. Hi there, I'm Betty. I Hi, manage Betty. the Turtle Hospital. The Turtle Hospital is located in the heart of the Florida Keys. We've been rescuing, rehabilitating, and returning sick and injured sea turtles to the wild for over 36 years. It is a licensed veterinary hospital. The admission fee to the Turtle Hospital is what funds the operating budget. So when people come in to see the turtles, they're actually funding the turtle care. Probably a very rudimentary question, but does their shell grow with them? Or they don't shed. That's a good question, actually. They're their shell grows for the whole life of the turtle, but this outer layer that you see, they're called scoots, and it's made of keratin like your fingernails, and as the shell grows, those scoots are gonna peel off and you'll, it'll keratinize underneath. So a little bit of both. A little bit of both. <laughs> Sometimes it's embarrassing to be human, I hate to say, but most of what we see are human impact injuries. So we're gonna see boat strike turtles, fishing gear entanglement and ingestion. And then here in the Florida Keys and really around the globe in warmer climates, we see this horrific disease called fibropapillomatosis. It's FP for short, and it causes these horrific tumors on sea turtles. This is a full running hospital. Their goal is to be able to release that turtle back into the wild. These are critically endangered hawksbill sea turtles. And if you look closely, they all are a bit deformed. Yeah. And that's because they were found in the bottom of a nest. And you can see the deformed shell. And that's because this egg was in the bottom of the nest. And during the incubation period, which is an average of 55 days, roots actually grew through that nest. And it's what we call root bound. So sometimes they grow around an egg and these babies they never got out of the nest. Patrice got to rub the algae off of this little thing. When she put the brush on there, it kind of wiggled. You could tell it truly was enjoying her spa day. He's resting his little head on your yeah. face. Oh, You're like, my oh that feels so good. Oh, look at him moving. If this little one was in the wild, there would be feeder shrimp and feeder fish that would be doing that this would do job. That for him. We don't have them in the tank, so this is something we do just to help oh, keep the algae down. Bad. Most of them enjoy it. it. We call it Sea Turtle Spa Day. It's like a little massage. Who doesn't like that, right? Betty, yeah. you are such a saint for yeah. what you do. I truly an am angel. Amazed. An angel. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. All of you. It looks like a little dinosaur, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. We talk about that. The history of our ocean is in right your there. Hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and hopefully the future, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the best thing you can do is fall in love with sea turtles and share that. That compassion is contagious, and that's really what we need globally to help the species survive. Rescue, rehab, and release. So tonight we got movie night set up, probably some sports. But I gotta get this dish hooked up so we can get it. So WineGuard's got this handy app to help find the dish satellite. So if you hit the view AR, it shows you right there that that's where the three satellites are. It's exactly where to point this dish. You go inside, you connect the Wally, and it's gonna connect real easy. I love this app. All right, all we gotta do now is connect Wally. I got the dish hooked up, we're good to go. We're popping now. We've had a busy week. Some nights I like to just stay home. Wow, look at it outside, babe. It's sunset. It is beautiful out there. All the palm trees, everybody's got their lights on their RVs. So we got football, hockey, and a little intermission. Sure, I think halftime we can have some fun. I'm coming over. Fantastic, come on over. Yeah. Come on, Brady. Who oh. is that? Oh. All right, here we go. We're back on the goal line. Come on, tackle now, Levante David. Nice. A Nebraska, Nebraska boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the best. Touchdown! Halftime for us is always time to stretch our legs, get a little dancing going. So we, we threw a little impromptu disco last night.
I'm putting on my PJs. We woke up this morning and I was already feeling that Key West vibe. We've been here all week, but we hadn't made it down to mile marker zero yet. You've been looking forward to this all week. You know, you got to have a little bit of food culture, too. I like it. There she is. Hi. Hi there. How's it going? I'm Shayla. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Oh, Kevin, Hi. so nice Great to meet you. you. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Key West Food Tours. I've been looking forward to this all week long. Awesome. You're really in for a treat. This is our first stop. This is Kaya Island Eats, and you're going to experience some of Key West's new best food. Show us the way. I'm hungry. Once we got inside, we met Scott. He got to tell us all about the fusion that he brought from Hawaii here to Key West. Aloha, are you ready for some island flavors? Oh, yes. yes. All right, let's serve up some great food. This is our Floribian fish, AKA reggae fish. We're gonna start with fresh locally caught mahi-mahi. We're gonna lightly jerk season it, so it's gonna have a little spice over coconut saffron rice. There's a touch of goat cheese, which gives it a nice smooth creaminess. And then at the end, we add mango pineapple salsa. You've got savory, you've got spicy, you've got sweet. Just like the islands, it's full of flavor. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank my you pleasure. so much. Absolutely. Are you ready to dig in? Oh, yes. <laughs> this is my kind of dish right here. I know it is. All right, All here right. we go. And and I see a little some bit of fish. plantains. I think my mouth just watered. Oh, the plantains a are amazing. A little bit of goat well, cheese. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, dig in. Mm. Wow. There is a lot of flavor going on mm -hmm. right there. Holy Moses. It's not too much heat. It, it's a little, it's a late heat. It's, it's a, a little crawl. Yeah, it's a crawl. <laughs> mm -hmm. I taste the mango, the pineapple, the jerk. Mm -hmm. And the goat cheese kind of cuts down on the sweetness a yeah. little bit. And the spice as well, and it's really balanced. It's a food tour, a walking tour, but it's also a historical and architectural tour as well. So as we're going from place to place to have these incredible dishes, we're also stopping and talking about some really cool, rich history that we have here in Key West as well. What I liked about Kaya Island Eats was it was off the beaten path. It wasn't on Duval Street. So when you find those little hidden hallways, make sure you take them because you never know what you're gonna find. Our second stop, I couldn't wait because we were getting a little bit of Cuban flavor now. And we went to the Cuban Coffee Queen. So we are closer to Cuba than we are to Miami. We're only 90 miles from Cuba. So we have this beautiful relationship with Cuba here in Key West. And you're gonna taste a little bit of that right now with the Cuban coffee. I enjoyed listening to the history of the Cuban influence here in Key West. And believe it or not, I really enjoyed the buchi. Even the aftertaste, for me, I love coffee. He's not a coffee lover but I taste the sweet and then the coffee. Yeah. The secret is that they actually take a scoop of brown sugar and they put it into the espresso tin to create almost like a paste. Would never have found this without Key West Food Tours. We love to end our tours here at the Gardens Hotel. It's this beautiful tropical oasis in the middle of the island. I've never taken a food tour and this was awesome. What a wonderful day. Thank you, Thank you so much. You this so is much, an absolute Kayla. pleasure. Great Thank to meet you. you. Thank nice you so you much. Well. Let's go explore some more. All right. It has been a wonderful day, a wonderful week. What was your favorite part about being down in the Keys? My favorite was the aquarium encounter. It brought me back to my childhood. I've been coming down to the Keys all my life, and to be able to get in the water and feed those fish, I was a child again. What was your favorite this week? Oh my gosh, it's so always so hard for me to choose. Come on and say hi to Petey the Permit. <laughs> yeah. You push me out of my boundaries all the time. I will never forget swimming with the fishes, the turtle hospital, all the angels there that rescue, rehab, and release those turtles. I'm gonna have to say, duh, being down to Key West on food. the food tour. Because there is so much more to Key West than Duval Street, that's all wonderful too, but to learn more about the history through food is what makes me happy. It was good, it was good. Come on down to Key West if you want some coffee. They have good coffee here. It's Cuban coffee, but you never know.